after two and four, sleep on no one. Welcome to the Voice of College Football, Michigan, as we look at the Wolverines' week one opponent, Western Michigan. First, in regards to the Wolverines in week one, Michigan fans, you know your personnel, you know your roster, but you also know that it's going to be interesting to see who takes the snaps at center in week one. Who is going to be that number one starting quarterback? Cade McNamara played brilliantly against Rutgers when he was forced into action down by three scores. He led the big comeback victory, played well, then faltered a bit, and was lost late against Penn State. Okay, during spring drills, he was credited with taking charge of the offense, showing leadership skills, being more decisive, being more assertive as a leader. So there's Cade McNamara. Then, of course, we've got the five-star, J.J. McCarthy. Uh, the defense has raved during the spring drills uh, about tra- chasing around J.J. McCarthy and his arm talent and just the physical talent. But got to learn the playbook, got to be prepared, got to be ready to play. Alan Bowman, of course, he's going to be the safety blanket, the security blanket coming in from Texas Tech. He's uh, basically been a two to two and a half year starter for Texas Tech. He hasn't been dominant enough to take over the job and be the guy all the time, but he's been battling for the job and usually won it at Texas Tech. Be concerned, though, if you look at his splits at Texas Tech, he has generally played and compiled the statistics you see, which are 33 touchdowns, 19 picks in his career at Texas Tech. The big numbers, the good numbers against the lesser opponents in the Big 12, he has struggled for the most part. Not that he's not had good games in the Big 12, but uh, most of his picks and less production against the better opponents. Josh Gaddis' offense needs to take hold. Where is it? Where is it going? It's supposed to be dynamic, explosive, matching up the playmakers in space and all of that. Hassan Haskins... Brings a smile to my face when I watch him run. I just think he's a tremendous back from the time that I first saw him two years ago against Illinois for the first time when he started to really get the carries and take over as the number one back. Of course, Michigan has a number of other options, including the guy that everybody wants to see. And if this turns into a blowout, even if it doesn't, it'll be intriguing to see Donovan Edwards on the field and how much opportunity he gets in week one against Western Michigan. He's the five-star, of course. Blake Corum should have a bigger role in this offense and be used in multiple sets, multiple ways, runner and receiver. Ronnie Bell's Mr. Dependable, 82 career catches. Seems like he's always the guy trying to make big plays when Michigan was down in the second half and trying to get the team fired up, pumping his fist, doing that to try to get the team fired up and ready to go and back in the ballgame. There's a wave of inexperienced but talented receivers on this roster. Uh, The only other somewhat certainty would be Cornelius Johnson, and he's a big body receiver that Michigan really needs to play well because he's kind of the only one of his kind, at least, that has some experience. Got four offensive linemen back from an offensive line that's been the worst in 2020 during the Jim Harbaugh era. All right, on defense, no Don Brown. He's gone. Mike McDonald takes over from the Ravens, of course. His track record, his history is the 3-4 defense. Thank goodness Aiden Hutchinson's back, uh, turning uh, away from the NFL draft possibilities. He would have been a pretty high pick. Daxton Hill's the best player on the defense. Hawkins is a capable safety Uh, The cornerback situation got better the last few games. It was horrific, of course. We'll get to that in just a second with the Western Michigan passing offense because Western Michigan at 3-3 last year and projected to go about 6-6 this year. So Tim Lester at 24-20 in his time taking over for P.J. Fleck, who really had Western Michigan at the top of the MAC. At the top of the MAC, in a way in which we rarely see a MAC team, because he got this program to a Cotton Bowl, to a New Year's Six Bowl game, and losing only by one score to Wisconsin. Michigan would be happy to have lost to Wisconsin by one score the last two times they played. That's what PJ Fleck did, having the top recruiting classes in the MAC and going undefeated in the regular season and the MAC championship game his final year in 2016. Tim Lester has not been able to build on that success. He's not won seven games yet. He's 24 and 20. 
Western Michigan, again, in the shortened six-game season, big offense, bad defense. That's what it was. The defense gave up 38, 44, 27, 53, 30. The overall points per game doesn't look horrific because they played Akron early, gave up 13 in that game. They only played six games. But the passing offense for Western Michigan, number one in the nation in explosive rate against a Michigan defense that last year was worst in the nation in giving up big plays. Check that. Worst in the Big Ten, one of the bottom five in the nation. Sorry. They were also last in the Big Ten and one of the five worst in the nation forcing turnovers. Quarterback Kalen Ellaby, tremendous player, 286 yards per game, number two in the MAC in total yardage. 18 touchdowns, only two picks. And Michigan doesn't get the turnovers on defense. Dwayne Eskridge is gone as one of the top wide receivers in college football. But you got Sky Moore coming back, 25 catches, three touchdowns. And also an interesting guy that they want to get the football more to, the Broncos do, Jalen Hall. 12 catches, seven touchdowns last year. All right. They've got three starting caliber players at running back, headed up by Michigan State transfer Ladarius Jefferson, who ran for 5.8 yards per carry and six touchdowns again in only a six-game season. On defense, Western Michigan should be much better. They've got all MAC players on all three levels of the defense, but again, they gave up tons of points last year. Ralph Holly had nine tackles for loss only in six games, three sacks. Ali Fayad had four sacks. A.J. Thomas, he's a he was a... Uh, Linebacker, converted safety now, nine tackles for loss. And uh, you got Bryson Garner with 45 tackles. Michigan, Western Michigan, as you would expect, the all-time series is a complete annihilation. It's seven to nothing, Michigan. They last, last played in 2018. The Wolverines won it 49-3. Mm, uh, and they first met in 1917. And this would be a surprise to me that Michigan only won the first game 17 to 13. Michigan, Western Michigan, there's the lineup right there for you. Week one at the big house. Your thoughts about uh, the Western Michigan game. Of course, everybody's talking about the Washington game, but you got to beat Western Michigan. And uh, the way things looked on, in the pass defense area for Michigan against this passing offense, it could be a little sketchy against Western Michigan, although, of course, Michigan should win the ball game. Your thoughts below right here at the Voice of College Football. Please lock it in, share these videos out on social media, and just let people know that you know that love Michigan, love college football, that we're here talking Michigan every day right here at the Voice of College Football, Maize and Blue.